Good morning guys, Victor here from Port Jefferson, New York. Now, Brooke and I took a ferry super early this morning. I'm talking waking up at 3.30. We were in northeastern Connecticut and we're fishing with our good buddy, Sam Warm. Hello. And what are we going after today? Uh, porgies, sea bass, alvies, blues, and maybe even some striped bass. Sam is a fishing fanatic. This guy sends me pictures all the time of giant flukes, stripers. He's a really good kid, and Brooke and I are really excited to fish with him. So we're gonna fish the Long Island Sound, correct? Yep. I'm excited to fish, let's get yep. out there. And we're just cutting off all the junk on the side. And then you got this big clam belly, just cut it in half. Now I'm putting it on these big hooks. I mean, I know these are huge pieces of bait, but it's working. Still a good fish though. Ooh, nice one, that might be legal. It's either legal or close. I think that's good. I think he'll be 14. I think he's good. You do? First keeper black sea bass out here in the hurricane in <laughs> the Long Island Sound. <laughs> oh, Sam. That's a good one. Big sea bass. Big sea bass. Big sea bass. Keeper or? I think so. Maybe another keeper. It's either a keeper or really close. Yes. 15. 15. Third Woo. keeper. Here we go. So this video is going to be kind of a two-part thing. We just got done fishing with Sam and we have a good amount of keeper sea bass in the cooler which is really cool because we went out yesterday on the other side of the Long Island Sound and we caught five, ten times the amount of sea bass but they were all like 12 to 14 inches and they need to be 15 inches to keep in the sound. So you guys can see that footage now which was with our good buddy Carl. And the last two days we've had really tough conditions as far as it being windy and rough and everything but hope you guys enjoy this part all right guys second drop and we're dealing with some adverse conditions today it is pretty rough out here and we got a really fast drift so much so that we're fishing 10 ounces and barely holding bottom oh it's a black sea bass but it's what it's not a keeper that's my first ever black sea bass fishing offshore in the long island sound you got these funky little squid skirts on there and we tip it with even more squid and um, it looks very similar to a chicken rig. Check out how cool that fish looks. You can measure it just for fun if you want. 13? 13. He's 13 inches and they have to be 15 inches, right? Don't want to jinx it, but this one feels over the 15 inch mark. We hit it pretty hard for being a little fish. Or not. This one might be smaller than the last one. Yeah, I think it's 12. Oh, look that? at that, Brooke, look at that. It's yellow under by his gill plate, you see that? And these things you do Watch not out. want to get pricked by. These are sharp. Very, Very sharp. sharp. See ya. When I called Carl on the phone, he told me, Victor, we'll go out and catch 50 black sea bass and not get a single keeper. There's the proof in the pudding. We gotta be up to like 12 fish now and not a single keeper. Yeah, let me Watch get it. Baby. Carl might have two or a big one. Yeah. Oh, that's a keeper! Yeah. There we go. There we go. That's a big boy. Look at that. Wow, hold those bad boys up. <laughs> Woo! Carl did good. The one thing about the Northeast that I was warned about is the weather can turn like that. And it has multiple times throughout this trip. If you guys look, I'm sure you guys can hear with the microphone, but it's blowing a solid 15 knots consistently and it's only supposed to get only supposed to get rougher throughout the week, so we really gotta time our fishing trips. And you know what everybody's gonna say? Everybody's gonna say, are you nuts for being out there? No, you know what they say? What? It's not that rough. It's, it's not only that one Those foot. are one footers. Yeah. Buddy, I go always. out on that all the time. Yep. All right, guys. I got my buddy Sam here. Now, you've seen me fillet fish time and time again. Time to pass the torch on to Sam. He's going to show you how to fillet his favorite fish in the Northeast, which is sea bass. Sea bass. So, let's get started. All right. So, we're going to start right behind this fin, cut on an angle. So we'll do our knife with the scales and get in all that head meat. Then we're gonna take the tip of our knife and lightly ride it laid along the backbone. And once we get towards the end, push through and feel the backbone, make sure not to cut through it, and follow all the way through. 
Then you're gonna lightly feel the backbone and use the tip of your knife and feel that backbone as you move down the fish. Comment below if you guys like Sam's uh, flying skills. Give him a thumbs up because I'd say he's pretty good. He's only 14 and he's killing it. All right, now there's some pin bones up here that in the back in the rib cage that can be a pain to cut through. There we go. And then we gotta cut over that backbone. Push through. And then I'll do the end and cut the fillet off. And there we go. Nice. Now we're gonna cut out the rib bones. Before we skin them just to make it easier. Let's see, I'll stop you right there. Alright. Alright. So what Sam did, a lot of people do, and there's two ways to do it. I generally, over um, snapper, grouper, sea bass, I like to go over the rib cage, and then Sam did it that way. Either way, there's no wrong way. Right? Either wrong, yep, there's no wrong way, it's your personal preference. But a lot of people make a big deal when you leave the meat on the ribs, but there really is not much on yeah. there at all. You want to show us for the camera? Well, this is the ribs, and on the other side, this is like nothing. Like yeah. literally nothing. It's such a small, small, like, thin layer. You can see how thick it is. It's like almost nothing. Very good, young man. Thank you. And then over the backbone, cut through the other side, and then kick off the foot. Nice job, Sam. I want to give a big thank you to Sam for inviting us up here and his dad Hillard over there. They were beyond gracious hosts and we had a ton of fun with Sam. Very passionate young angler right here. He is going to be, he's going to be a good, he's going to be real good when he grows up. And a big thank you to Dexter Outdoors because they are the ones who planned this entire trip to the Northeast. Big sponsor of ours and if you guys want to save 20% on any of Dexter Outdoors products, I'll have it linked below. And you guys can use my code LANDSHARK to save 20% off any of their products on the website. That's all the time I got for you. So next clip, I'll see you guys back in Florida and we're gonna cook something up. I'm very sad to announce that this is gonna be the last video or the last catch and cook I'm filming from our New England trip. But we had so much fun. Once again, big thank you to Dexter Outdoors and to Kathy, to Carl, to Tyler, to everyone who made the trip possible. And of course, Brookie, because Brooke was a huge help. We oftentimes film each other, but a lot of people don't realize that Brooke's always just constantly, do you want me to film this? Do you want me to film that? And I really appreciate it, babe, so thank you. I gotta start out the video by saying that. So the first thing we're doing tonight, we have sea bass, which I've never made before. I did have the pleasure of enjoying Brooke's sea bass. She did a catch and cook on it as well. But look at this. This is some of the best looking fillets I have seen so far. And you guys know me, I'm huge on eating fish and we have filleted. We have seen so many fish thus far. And we didn't have a lot, so I actually pulled out some porgy as well. So I'm gonna be doing porgy. And just look at the difference in that. Um, both fish people really like in the Northeast, but the sea bass is a little bit whiter than the porgy, but both pretty firm. And I'm excited to try it. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do a, it's just Brooke and I, so I'm doing a real simple recipe. I'm gonna be doing a franchise, all purpose flour. And we're gonna be just using enough flour to coat our fish, as well as to help make a pan sauce. So, flour, salt, and this is the primary source of salt for seasoning my fish, so I'm really seasoning the heck out of that. Flour, black pepper, and any longtime subscriber knows the four, I, I can't say trifecta, I don't know how you would say a fourfecta. My, no. What would you say? I don't know. Go ahead, come on. Four is always quad. Quadfecta, whatever you guys want to call it. My four favorite seasonings, that's like the bread and butter for seasoning fish, has always been salt, pepper, garlic powder. I love me some garlic powder, and I'm not afraid to use it. And paprika. And this is actually my favorite paprika to use. 
Hungarian paprika. My family grew up using this brand right here. So we got that. Why don't we just say the four staples? The four staples. Very good verbiage, Brooke. Or adjective. I don't know. And I'm going to just go ahead and give this a quick mix. Make sure everything is blended through very nicely and make sure there's no clumps in any of that flour. And I hope you guys have been enjoying these Northeast videos. This is probably going to be one of the last ones you see. And comment below which one, which one was your guys' favorite. Dip our fish into the flour. Okay, a couple times back and forth. Make sure all of it is in there. And there's the sea bass, that's what it looks like. Now we go into our egg. And now when I make franchés, I go flour first, then into my egg. And some people will put lemon juice in here. And that's what I do. So I'm not gonna bore you guys and show you how we coated every single one of these. But what we got going up next, we're gonna go straight from there into our pan, which I have heating up with some olive oil. So that'll be the next thing you guys see. Oil is nice and hot in our pan. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put in our fish. Oh yeah, it's hot enough. When you hear that sizzle, you know it's hot enough. And so, I guess the way I kinda, whoops, what did I do there? I guess the, the way I kinda view franchise, it's kinda like you're making fish French toast, which I don't know about you, but I love French toast. So you're kind of frying the egg on the outside of the fish and it's a really neat texture as opposed to just frying it in breadcrumb, you know? So we should be able to fit all of these in there perfectly. I'll tell you guys something, if you had Smell-O-Vision, if Smell-O-Vision was a thing, you would be licking your screen right now. It smells so good. I was just talking to Brooke about it. The smell of fried egg, oh my gosh, smells so good. Look at that. Perfect golden brown. Golden brown on both sides. So everyone, Brooke and I are gonna, oh no. Oh no, we salvaged it. Everyone gets one piece of sea bass and this person's gonna get a conjoined piece of porridge. We're gonna add three tablespoons of butter. Three tablespoons of butter. We're gonna make a little roux. So I'm gonna add some flour in here to thicken up our sauce. We're gonna cook that flour until that raw flour taste comes out of there. Saturday Brook made such a good clam sauce pasta. We brought back a lot of seafood home from our New England trip, and she made this clam sauce pasta with uh, cherry tomatoes and clams and uh, wine, lime juice, a cream sauce. It was super good, so we're heating that up because we had a little bit left over. Now, we're gonna deglaze our pan with some white wine, some Pinot Grigio. And all those little pieces of egg and, and that raw flour is just gonna come off the bottom of the pan and we're gonna let this simmer for about a minute or two until it thickens up and until that real winey flavor's out of there. Now our finishing touch is gonna be some lemon juice. So now we're gonna put some fresh parsley in there. All right, now the best part, we're gonna pour our pan sauce over our fish. Oh yeah. And now we have some of Brooke's delicious clam pasta that she made on Saturday. So how good does that look? It's digging. You don't know which fish is which. Just try both and we'll see what we I think. I think this is the sea bass. And I, I know this is the sea bass, so here we go. Some sea bass with that sauce on. Mmm. Mm. Sauce is really good. Mm-hmm. Mm. I believe that was the sea bass, and I believe this is porky. So good. 
So good. I know this is porky because it's um more like flaky. Okay, let me try the other fish. Mm -hmm. I think what I just had, so is this porky or sea bass? That's porky. Can you taste the big difference? No, I can't taste the big difference either, especially prepared this way. Both are so, so good. And um, yeah, it's super simple, super easy to make this dish. I keep going back and forth between the two. Trying to find a difference. I think that both textures are very similar. They are. And they're, um, the actual filet size, like sea bass, even though they're a lot bigger than the porgy, the filet size is pretty same as far as the thickness is concerned. If I didn't know there was two different fish on my plate, I wouldn't have thought it. Me either. So, hold on. Cheers, babe. Salute. Cheers. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go enjoy my dinner with my lovely fiance right here. And um, like I said, um, this New England trip was seriously, it was kind of eye-opening. Like the world of possibilities and what, at least I don't know about you, but what I want to do on YouTube, I want to go everywhere. I want to take you and I want to go explore fisheries and this and that. And there's just like, there's so much in Florida that it's mind boggling that I could not even get like 1% of the things I want done as far as showing you guys. And then you go to New England and it's like a whole new world. Like we were supposed to go and do commercial um, set traps for commercial lobster and this and that. You continue eating, <laughs> I'm gonna ramble on. There's so many things I wanna do and show you guys, go to the West Coast and I know it's a lot of talking, but steps are being taken to be able to do those kinds of things. And yeah, so seriously, get excited. And enough rambling for now. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in that next video. Bye.